right, our next contestant of the evening is Laura Ball. She hails from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and is an internationally unknown evolutionary psychologist <laughs> with t-shirts from Oberlin, Stanford, and <laughs> MIT. My talk is called The Temperature-Dependent Proliferation of Anxiogenic Narratives. Uh, now to start, I'm going to show you four uh, still images taken from four different movie trailers released in theaters this year. <laughs> You've all heard it before, modern fiction is becoming more violent than any other storytelling tradition in the history of our species. Uh, these modern narratives are intense, they're faster paced with higher stakes, and in psychological terms they're extremely anxiogenic. Other researchers have studied this phenomenon by measuring increases in the number of guns fired per film or the number of dead bodies. Um, <laughs> for our main metric, we, uh, we chose something uh, a, little, uh, a little easier to uh, evaluate. And we ask ourselves, why is this happening? Why is our collective taste evolving in this way? Uh, Many evolutionary psychologists, including Steven Pinker at Harvard University, believe that stories evolved as didactic tools and humans use them to uh, share instructions or strategies about how to handle common problems. However, when we examine the most common causes of the apocalypse in film, uh, <laughs> we see that many of them are patently ridiculous. And uh, while uh, that, uh, that big one in the corner there may seem uh, alarmingly plausible, uh, when, we, when we consider the coping strategies presented in these films, <laughs> we often find that the behavior modeled in these stories is distinctly maladaptive. <laughs> Other evolutionary psychologists, such as Robert Sapolsky at Stanford University, have suggested that uh, while the mammalian stress response system originally evolved to handle short, acute stresses like a 50-yard dash to get away from a hungry lion, uh, humans leave their stress system activated 24-7 um, in response to abstract psychological threats like visiting in-laws or the possibility of a traffic jam. Uh, <laughs> And so from a, from a Sapolskyan view, uh, you know, it could be that uh, these anxiogenic narratives speak to us because they give voice to the stress that we're all chronically feeling, you know, like um, when, uh, when, when we all call up our best friend's name, Charlotte, and say things like, oh my God, my performance review is tomorrow, just shoot me now. Uh, now, the, 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 problem, the problem with that argument is that it does not explain the rapid increase in these anxiogenic narratives in modern times. We cannot, in good conscience, claim that our daily lives today are more stressful than those of Homer's audiences who battled some of, uh, some of the worst famines in world history, or the audiences of Shakespeare who lived in the shadow of the Black Death, or the audiences of the Great Depression. Uh, to put it simply, the Sapolskyan view fails to explain why the highest grossing films at the height of World War II looked like this, instead of like this. <laughs> We, however, can uh, explain the surging popularity of these stressful stories uh, in modern times with reference to another parameter, which has also increased rapidly uh, over, over the course of the 20th century, uh, and that is global temperature. Now, I, activist groups have understandably focus their marketing campaigns around the horrors awaiting the more charismatic life forms on this planet. 
Um, however, climate change uh, will pose substantial peril to, to the human population as well. Uh, the National Resources Defense Council expects 150,000 deaths uh, due to heat caused by climate change uh, by the year 2050, and that's just in America's top 40 cities. Now, 281 of those deaths are scheduled to take place in San Francisco, with an additional 260 in San Jose. Uh, <laughs> Through the activation of, of heat shock proteins, we can also, uh, we can also expect uh, to see a rise in cancer, Alzheimer's, Desmond-related myopathy, and smelly armpits. <laughs> now, uh, clearly, in the face of climate change, humans are going to need to evolve better thermoregulation methods. Now, engaging with a stressful story increases your heart rate, uh, increases your blood circulation in the upper levels of the skin, stimulates your sweat glands, and lowers your core body temperature. Uh, physiologically, the effect, would be, the effect would be the same if the mental stress came from a, a visiting in-law or a traffic jam. However, uh, watching a stressful movie is a particularly efficient option because it requires an absolute minimum of body motion, so no additional heat is produced. Uh, and, and that is the basis of our hypothesis which is that unlike many other forms of fiction, which probably did evolve as, as um, didactic tools, these modern anxiogenic narratives are a special case. They belong in a different taxonomic class, if you will. They evolved separately as an adaptive mechanism for lowering core body temperature, and they proliferate faster in higher ambient temperatures. <laughs> For full effect, many Americans choose to partake of their stressful stories inside of carefully designed and regulated evaporative cooling chambers, uh, uh, which, which also supply glucose replenishments ad libitum. Uh, now, maintaining a homeostatic body temperature is very expensive, metabolically speaking, and cooling the body down is actually more expensive than heating it up. That expense is reflected in the portion size of those glucose replenishments. Um, <laughs> Which, uh, which has increased steadily over the 20th century, uh, along, with the, um, along with the release of these apocalyptic films, to volumes which far exceed the size <laughs> to volumes which far exceed the size of the adult human bladder, which is about 20 ounces. Uh, it, in fact, by the current rates of increase, uh, before the year 2050, uh, the the size the portion size of soft drinks in America will have exceeded the size of the North Atlantic fin whale's bladder. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is, yes, a truly frightening indicator of things to come. Uh, there, there is another reason why uh, climate change could be dangerous to humans. Uh, research by Amar Chima at the University of Virginia shows that Humans perform worse on cognitive reasoning tasks in warmer environments, even with an increase of just five degrees above room temperature. Uh, this explains why modern audiences are not disposed to be critical of the plot holes in, uh, in Hollywood movies, <laughs> which, uh, which would surely have prevented our Shakespeare-loving ancestors from, uh, from appreciating American cinema. Uh, a sobering corollary to this is that the further climate change progresses, uh, the more difficult it may be for us to persuade the outstanding 27% of this country to accept scientific arguments that it is real. Uh, uh, our, our research has far-reaching applications for health policy. Uh, government initiatives would do well to ensure that the number of anxiogenic narratives released per annum keeps a pace with what regional temperature increases will require to maintain a healthy populace. Uh, uh, in, in conclusion, it is Ironic, but scientifically unarguable, that stories about the destruction of all mankind may prove instrumental in saving the human race. Thank you. <laughs>